All right, today we're going to demystify two acronyms you might have heard about that are totally changing the game for how we build, well, everything, BIM and VDC. If you've ever driven past a massive construction site and wondered how it all comes together, or more to the point, why so many of these huge projects go way over budget and blow past their deadlines, then you are in exactly the right place. Millions of parts, dozens of different teams, supply chains stretching around the world. It is a massive, intricate orchestra. But here is the hard truth. That orchestra is often out of tune. We have all heard the stories. The new stadium opening a year late. The high-speed train line costing double its price tag. It's not just bad luck. It is a systemic problem. A government study estimated that the U.S. construction industry wastes $15.8 billion every single year due to fragmentation. Why? Because for decades, the architect, the structural engineer, and the plumber were all working off different sheets of paper in different rooms, never really talking to each other until it was too late. Check this out. This diagram is called the Paulson Curve, and it's from way back in 1976. That falling blue line, that's your ability to make changes that affect the final cost. The rising red line is the actual money you're spending. You can probably see where this is going. And that right there, that's the absolute heart of the problem. At the very beginning of a project, when you've spent almost no money, your power to influence the final cost is at its peak. But that's also the exact moment when you know the least about all the little details. By the time you're deep in construction and spending tons of cash, your ability to make a cost-saving change is basically gone. This mismatch is the engine that drives waste. Okay, so how in the world do we fix that? Well, the first piece of the puzzle is all about getting way more information way earlier in the game. And that, my friends, brings us to the first piece of the puzzle, BIM. And a great way to think of it is as the digital prototype of a building. You know what the easiest way to wrap your head around it is? To think about Legos. BIM is like having the ultimate Lego set. You get the instruction booklet, a complete parts list of every single brick you need, and a fully built digital version that you can spin around and look at from every angle before you even start building for real. Now, having that perfect digital twin of the building is a massive step forward for sure. You can spot all kinds of problems, like a pipe hitting a duct before anyone even breaks ground. But is that enough? Is a perfect model of the thing you're building enough to solve a multi-billion dollar problem that's really about people and processes? And the answer you probably guessed is no. So here is the absolute T takeaway. BIM is the what? It's the object, the model, the shared database. It is the single source of truth that the entire team, from the architect to the owner to the builder, can all rely on. No more guessing. But look, having a fantastic model is only half the battle. How you use that model, that's where the real magic happens. And that's called VDC, stands for Virtual Design and Construction. And it's the whole process. So if BIM is the what, you know, the noun, then virtual design and construction or VDC is the how or verb. You can think of it as a virtual rehearsal. VDC is not a thing you buy, it's a process. It's the collaborative way of using that intelligent BIM to virtually build the entire project. Finding and fixing all the problems on the computer long before they can happen on the expensive job site. The best way to picture BDC is like a full-scale dress rehearsal for a play. The entire team, the plumber, the electrician, the HVAC contractor, they all gather around this digital model and they rehearse the entire construction sequence from start to finish. They solve all the clashes and coordination issues virtually so that when they finally get out into the field, the real performance goes off without a hitch. The process itself is actually really logical. First, you create that super detailed model. That's your BIM. Second, you bring all the teams together to virtually coordinate their work inside that model. Third, you use that perfectly coordinated model to plan the sequence of work. 
And finally, you just go out and execute that well-rehearsed plan. Okay, so we have the model and we have the process, but what's the core philosophy that makes this whole thing so powerful? This diagram here really tells the story. VDC integrates the product, the organization, and the process. This is what's called the POP model, and it's super simple. You've got the product, that's the building represented by our bin. You've got the organization, that's all the people, architects, engineers, contractors, everyone. And then you've got the process, that's how they all work together. The schedule, the workflow, the whole shebang. VDC is about modeling all three of these things together. So VDC isn't a piece of software you install. It's a whole new way of managing a project. It's a methodology. It's about using those digital models to simulate the entire project, the what, the who, and the how, to make absolutely sure everything is lined up to hit your goals. So BIM is a powerful tool, but VDC is the strategic framework, the playbook that tells you how to use that tool to win the game. Okay, so that's the theory. Sounds great, right? But what does this actually look like day to day? How does using a VDC framework really change how a project gets built? Well, it works kind of like this continuous loop. First, you define your objectives. You start with really clear, measurable goals, not just build a building. Second, you integrate the people. You get everybody in the same room, virtual or physical, from day one. Third, you model the process. This is where the magic happens. You link that 3D model to the construction schedule and create a 4D simulation. You can literally watch the building get built on a screen week by week and catch problems months in advance. And finally, you measure and tweak, constantly checking your progress and making the plan better. And the effect of just smoothing out that process is huge. This customer quote from one of the biggest construction firms in the US said it perfectly. Just saving one single hour per person per day by cutting out wasteful steps adds up to millions and millions of dollars. That's what happens when you focus on the how, not just the what. So the big question, does it actually work? Does all this lead to real measurable results on the bottom line? Well, the data from projects that have done this is pretty undeniable. Just take a look at these charts based on our internal project findings. They show cost and labor savings from real projects that used BDC. Now look at the two tallest bars on both charts, trade coordination and constructability. That means the biggest savings came from helping all the different expert teams, plumbers, electricians, you name it, coordinate their work, and from figuring out the best way to physically build something before you're out in the mud. In 2014, the importance of virtual design and construction report showcased the repeatable impact of VDC across 18 projects within their portfolio from 2004 to 2013. It's a demonstration of what's possible when we integrate the POP or product organization and process model. This is VDC directly tackling that old Paulson curve problem. VDC is a system designed to squeeze that risk and variability out of the process, giving you much more confidence that you'll get what you want when you want it for the price you agreed on. Okay, here's the bottom line, especially if you're a business leader. At its core, what VDC really gives you is predictability. Construction is famous for being unpredictable. What we're really talking about here is a fundamental shift for the entire industry. It's about moving away from being reactive and putting out fires to being proactive and integrated. It's really about building smarter, not just working harder. And that brings us to our final question. This shift from what was basically a chaotic craft to a predictable data-driven process is huge. So if we really start treating construction like a new building manufacturing process using these digital twins and virtual rehearsals, what part of building do you think will be transformed next? AI, robotics, prefabrication, industrialized construction? The possibilities are really just beginning.